Hey, what's up guys? Today in this video, we are going to see how we implemented the code which we had rather the API that we had developed in our last video to show a list of URLs that belongs to a collection. So what I am right now able to do is click on any of this V button and actually see the URLs that are inside that particular collection, right? Now initially we had something like if I go to my routes list we had URLs slash right so if I come over here and do URLs okay I think I have deleted the route so it doesn't work anymore I mean I have deleted the API route so it would fail but we had this page right where we have our URL data based on that we were displaying the links table and the pagination. Now this entire thing can be removed because we don't need this URL anymore. Instead what we have is the listing of URLs based on the collection context. So the most important thing over here if you see is actually the context of the collection. So let's understand what we have done in this page. So I have collection link page. This is the you know, component which will be rendering that page. Uh, I re just realized I haven't type hinted it. So let me do that as well. Okay. <clears throat> so I have this collection next page which is of type next page. The in first thing that I have done is I have added the collection after that i have taken the router because i'll need the id from the router query i have this page variable which is very similar to the previous page because i will need that query param over here right when when there is nothing in that page i would have one otherwise you know, the page changes based on the pagination then we have the url data now the url data as the API that we had developed, right? It is collection slash ID and then URLs. So collection slash seven would mean URLs for collection seven, for five, four, three, so on and so forth, right? So this is the API that we are going to call. And this is the method that I have. Now in the use effect, I am checking whether the ID is defined or not. When the ID is defined, I make a fetch URL call. Similarly, because I have a, you know, page thing going on, so I'm checking if the page changes and when there is a change in the page, I am replacing the route with that particular thing. So this is what is happening inside the use effect. The use effect is, you know, watching for ID and page, okay, on change of ID. I fetch the URL again and on change of page that particular you know, route parameter changes. Now in the layout things are quite straightforward. I have this page title which is fine. I add the breadcrumb and then we are checking whether the URL data is there and it is not null. If that's the case right we're into the links table. Okay I just realized that the delete code needs to be written I will just add that it's going to be very straightforward I'm not going to create a video for that because we have already covered it um, so yeah the links table is getting rendered over here no changes so far because the data is still the same the only thing which has happened and that is the beauty of these component kind of you know structures is that you know, not a lot of underlying code changes because my links table continue to show the links data when I am able to ensure that I am sending the data in the desired format and you know, the pagination component is also coming up. So yes the check is here the links table is getting rendered and then URL data if I see that the length is more than the per page thing so for example if I have 10 and the total is more than 10 then the pagination will be rendered and on change of that pagination obviously that's the reason we have 
this state variable right and based on that things are happening so for example let's just say inside my api if i have controller right over here i have one let's hit refresh so as you can see only one is visible and if i click on two or three my urls change because what is happening is the let me go over here the pagination does a non change changes the page number sets that variable right which we have over here this state variable this is not the first time i'm doing it there's already a video around how i have created the pagination but if you quickly want to understand what happens is the pagination component on click of any number calls this function and on this function i am changing the state variable and because that state variable is being watched using the use effect any change there basically means that this code block will be executed and the url changes and based on that you know the id and everything are re-rendered okay i mean I mean, the id changes and so we fetch the data again so yeah that's the refactoring that i had to do so that now our views or rather our urls let me quickly change it back to 10 yeah so that you know our collections are now able to show the urls that are inside it and obviously the now url listing is pretty much based on the context of the collection and as you can see the details continue to be there i think i'll have to change this particular listing page thing from the breadcrumb but yeah rest of the things are pretty straightforward still happening in the same particular way it was happening before let me see if i can get collection one and over here should be right the failures and everything these components continue to show the same data because you know underlying things have still not changed i think the only thing which i'll have to do is in this thing change the breadcrumb thing and i should be done so that's about it guys that's how we refactored our code so that the collection now shows the url in the context if you like this video do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel